Welcome to Song of Freedom. We'll take you through the boat and show you where a few things are. So straight into the rear cabin, over to our right, we've got our shower and toilet compartment. Straight through here goes into the cockpit and further from, forward from there, we have a galley and a twin cabin at the front. Let's take a look. So in the galley, you've got everything you would expect. Uh, over just here, we have a hob and oven underneath. Uh, on the other side, we have a microwave with a TV on top and a fridge underneath. Standard rules apply with these things. Light the gas uh, sensibly, we'll show you in a second. Uh, use the fridge uh, sensibly, do not turn the fridge up, it will flatten your batteries, leave it set to a maximum of around two on the dial. And uh, if you're going to run the microwave, you need to turn the engine on because it will flatten your batteries as well. If you want to run the TV, don't retune it. We'll have already done all of that to ensure that it works when you leave. If you're not getting a picture, it's because your aerial isn't connected or it's not pointing towards the signal transmitter. And remember, turn the inverter off when you're not using it. It will flatten your batteries. Your TV aerial is stored in the cockpit in the locker there. Pop it on the roof, run the cable through and connect to the socket just there. Inverter switch is in the cockpit down by the corner of the forward door. And there's also a switch there for the water pump and the fridge in that box. Now the inverter is a big red key. It's a battery isolator here in the off position there and you push and turn it and that locks it on. Now, if you hear that noise while it's running, it's run out of power and it will turn itself off shortly. And remember, if you leave that on unnecessarily, you'll flatten your batteries. The only things on board that require it are the microwave and the telly. If you're running in the microwave, run the engine as well because it has the power to flatten your batteries quite quickly. Your water pump and fridge switch there. You can leave both on unless you run out of water. Like any boat, in order to light the gas, you need to follow a simple procedure. We take a match, we strike the match and hold it to the burner we wish to light. Push, turn and hold the knob down for a few seconds once it's lit and make sure the entire ring is lit and then let go. If you let go of it too soon, it will go out. The important part about this is that this gas is heavier than air. And if that gas escapes in the environment of the boat, all it can do is sink. And when I say sink, I mean under the floors. And uh, if there's too much of it under the floors and there's a source of ignition, well, you can guess what could happen. Now, of course, it takes a lot of gas, but we want to minimize any risks whatsoever. So we always have a source of ignition before we let any gas out. And that applies to the oven as well and the grill. Now, the oven and grill do have igniters on them, but matches are by far and away a more guaranteed way of ensuring that ignites with instant effect. If you wish to convert the saloon into a berth, here's how. That cushion, remove that. Under here, we have a board, easier to take the board off. And inside we have this support. This support fits into the location lugs. Ensure that the light colored rail is on the inside to take the support of the base. And now we can put the board back. So you put the other cushion back and the base and uh, these backrests have got solid backs on them. They go into place and with a little bit of a squeeze, they fit in and you've got a single berth. Over in the corner of the saloon, at the back of the sofa, we've got a USB charging port there, there's a dual port there, and also a 12 volt charging socket on the other side for cigarette lighter type things as well. Please don't over power that if you've got cool boxes and such. We'd prefer you didn't do that because again, you could easily flatten the batteries. Don't use three pin sockets from home to charge your phones and such. Always use those sockets there. 
So a quick note where your fire equipment is, there is an extinguisher there in the cockpit. Down in the saloon, we have a fire blanket by the door and the microwave. And in the forward cabin, right in the corner there, there's another fire extinguisher. Your loo and shower compartment at the back. It's quite a large compartment, this. And I apologize, I have to show you a toilet. Um, this is how it operates. Foot pedal to the side opens the ball valve and right the way next to the sink here, we have a flush button. Ensure that valve closes when you've finished because the tank is immediately below. You don't want those smells coming back up. Now to get the canopy down, we have a couple of clips that hold the canopy upright uh, over in the forward corners and we have a winch just here that allows us to get it down. To get it down, be very careful. Do not allow this to free fall at all. Uh, you run various risks and ensure that there's nobody behind uh, the canopy whilst you take it down. You take some release off that and then you'll need to hold this and just wind that down. Now you do need to hold the ratchet out of the way and let this wind down under its own weight and it should go quite happily so long as the bunges on the fabric part at the back are loose as they were here. Now sometimes it might take a little bit of an encouragement. And there we go. And to get the canopy back up again, you need to simply wind on the ratchet. And once you've finished, put the clips back on to ensure it holds up in case the ratchet gives. The key to open your water tank hangs on the hook just behind the helm position, just there. And the filler is on the deck to the starboard side of the cockpit. Please do your daily engine checks every morning. Don't ignore them. A couple of minutes checking this can save you hours and hours and hours later on. Under the filler cap here, we push, turn and open, and we can have a look inside to see whether there is any water inside. So, we can see water there, it could do a little bit of a top up, but certainly not to the point where it overflows. Do this every morning, do not open that cap if the engine has been running and the engine is hot. You could get some exceptionally hot water spiraling out of there straight up your arm, or worse if you're looking over it. Your spare engine fluids are stored in the locker at the back. So we're just going to top this up ever so Gently with coolant, we don't want a lot in here, we just want a touch. There we go. And we put the cap on. Now please use the antifreeze that we provide for you. If you run out of antifreeze, well, something's wrong, you should have more than enough. And give us a call if you need any more, because you shouldn't, and there may be something wrong that we need to attend to. Now that's the left hand side, port side done. We can put that one back down and now we need to lift the other one. I tend to use a key for that because it's awkward. Now you can see these floor panels will rest themselves there. Just get yourself a good angle on it and it should be fine so long as the boat isn't being thrown around. Now under here, we have our weed filter, transparent cap. So what we have inside here is a colander type thing. It's the gray area in there. And that filters the water that the engine sucks out of the river uh, in order to act as a coolant. Now, 
it's a colander in effect it works exceptionally well if this is absolutely full of river weed it will still work very well you shouldn't have to touch it if it's full of mud one you've been in the shallows which is probably somewhere you shouldn't be because you could run all kinds of risks from that and two if it's full of mud you do need to empty it now to empty it you simply undo it it's a bit tight but it'll come off don't drop these parts the o-ring must be saved and inside we can take out this item you see there's a little bit of weed in there and i do call it a little bit there's hardly any requirement there i certainly wouldn't bother emptying that generally uh, and uh, but if you do just drop it overboard uh, the weed obviously not the container O-ring must go back in, otherwise it will not work. And nip that closed, and that's that job done. And also down here we have the engine dipstick just here. Take it out and wipe it, and then put it back. And make sure you, it goes right the way to the bottom so you get the clank, you know it's there. Now you'll get a true reading on it. And currently on here, it's a little low. You can see we've got the maximum mark here and the minimum mark is just underneath the oil level. So if I just wipe that a little bit, you can see it's just under there. So we want to top that up. Now we have to top it up in a filler point, which is almost right in the center of the uh, engine compartment covers. So we will need to move a couple of other things in order to do that. Wipe that for a moment and we'll put it back again. So the filler cap is right here. And so we lift the other panel again and it makes it easier actually if we take out this central piece. And now we can take the cap off and put a drop of oil in. So this engine uses a drop of oil. The difference between the minimum and maximum mark is about half a litre. You'll always go out with about a litre's worth of oil on the boat to top this up. Wipe the cap and make sure that we're not putting any dirt into the engine. And we'll pop that back down. So we've waited uh, a minute or so for some of the oil that we've put in the top to drop to the bottom so it will appear on the dipstick. And now we'll take the level out again and you can see that the oil level has risen. So I haven't, I've either not put enough in or I haven't let it all run down. But you see it's now halfway between minimum and maximum. So you can see just here the maximum mark. That's actually okay. We don't want to keep it on maximum. We want it somewhere between minimum and maximum. But I will wipe that again and just do another dip because I don't want to overfill it because that will cause it to burn more oil faster. So we've done that again. And actually, yeah, most of it's run through. So we are between minimum and maximum. I'd put a tiny bit more in here because it's at the boatyard. Um, and uh, you'll get three or four days out of that so long as you don't race the engine. And now we can put things back together. There are three sets of battery isolators in the cockpit. Just behind the helm seat, as you see here, we have what's labeled the domestic battery bank. You can see that's in the on position. Down in the step box below, we have the engine battery bank, again, in the off position. And then if you remember from earlier, we also have another one down here on the other side, which is the inverter. Now that's left in the off position unless you need it on. If we ask you to turn these off in an emergency, this is where to find them in the cockpit. The main control lever controls our forward direction, back to neutral, and our reverse direction and speed. When the lever is in its home position, which is uh, about 45 degrees off of uh, true, uh, so let's call it 10 o'clock on the clock face, we can pull out this knob. Now this knob controls whether she's in gear or not. Easy way to remember it, the knob's out, it's out of gear, 
if the knob's in, it's in gear. And once this lever is moved away from its home position, which is neutral, you can't pull the knob in or out. So to start the engine, we must set the lever to neutral, pull the knob out to take it out of gear, and then push the lever forward until it gently makes contact with the front there. So to start up from cold, put the key in the ignition, and we turn the key, and initially we get this light on here, and if we turn the key further and hold it, we get the other light on And The orange light is the glow plug light. From cold, we need to hold the glow plug in that position for somewhere in the region of ooh, 25 seconds or so. If you see, if we let go, it goes out. So we've got to hold it. And once we're up to about 25 seconds, we turn the key. She fires. Just ease that down, otherwise you won't hear me. And we make sure that the red light here goes out. That's your battery charging light. If that light is on, you're not charging your batteries, which are absolutely vital to you. To stop the engine, what we don't do is, uh, is that. Because, as you see, it doesn't stop the engine. But it will stop charging your batteries, and they're really important. So leave the key in the run position and make sure no lights are on whilst the engine's running. In order to stop the engine, we pull that up. And now we've got this light on, we turn it off, otherwise we can burn out the circuit. And you must push that home, otherwise the engine will not restart later. If the engine's warm, it should just start. Like that. But make sure that light goes out. Now, that hasn't gone out because we haven't read the engine yet. So I'll just read the engine with the lever behind the camera. And there's the light gone out. Everything's running absolutely hunky-dory. Now, the gauges. We're not really bothered too much by the gauges generally. But keep an eye on them. The only one that's likely to cause you any problem is the temperature gauge. And on this boat, it sits at about 90 degrees when the engine is running up to temperature. Anything over 90, you're likely to have a problem. So please be very careful. 100, something's definitely wrong. You need to stop the engine and check it. Now, this one is your oil pressure. So long as it's reading something, it's fine. Now, whilst the engine is cold and um, the oil is thick, the reading is quite high. But once the engine warms up, it really will get down to about one bar. That's perfectly normal for these engines. Don't need to worry about it. And when the engine's running, we have a healthy flow of water out of the exhaust, which is at the back port side of the boat. And that's Song of Freedom. Please keep the link to this video to hand in case you need any refreshers whilst you're out, or of course you can give us a call. Have a great holiday, and we'll see you soon. God, it's bloody hot today. It's really hot. Have a great time.